Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Go down to verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Go down to verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Now turn back to Genesis chapter 3. Very quickly, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask that you would bless this word of God that we preach tonight. I ask, Father, that you would anoint me with the power and presence of your spirit as never before to preach this message tonight. Help me to re preach it and help those here tonight to receive it. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and give you all the glory for it. Amen. I want to preach a message tonight, a rather lengthy one, uh, on Satan's attack on the family. I wasn't expecting to preach this message tonight. I wasn't expecting to go this direction, but uh, the way I do these messages is I go home every week and I pray and ask the Lord what he wants me to preach the next week. I don't have these already in a book or anything like that. I go home every week and I go and pray to God and God gives me these messages. So tonight's going to be the last message on marriage and the family and I'm going to be talking about Satan's attack on the family in the United States of America. Satan hates the family unit more than any other social, political, or religious unit on the earth. Why? Because the family was created first before the government or the church ever came into existence. Adam and Eve was created as a family before the church was existed and before the government existed. Therefore, the family has God's first preeminent favorite blessing on it. Matter of fact, the family has more of a blessing on it than the church does, and more of a blessing than the government does. Talk about Satan's attack on the family. Satan is a crafty, subtle, shrewd, sly, scheming trickster. He's skillfully cunning and deceitfully wise. He's not clumsy or awkward on what he does. He's not a novice about attacking our family. He's had a long history of experience on attacking the family. He knows just exactly what he's doing. He attacks us wearing a disguise. He comes in unexpectedly like a snake. He doesn't come with a neon sign flashing around his neck saying, I'm the devil and I'm going to steal, kill, and destroy your family. He comes in in subtle ways, disguised. Satan is a liar. Everybody say Satan is a liar. What is his main lie? Satan's main lie is that we can sin and get away with it. Here we learn the devil's arsenal against the family. We're going to learn this tonight. Now I want to tell you something. Before God gave man a woman, God gave man work. <laughs> Are you all ready? Work was before the fall of man. Work was God's plan while they were innocent before sin came into the world. So before that guy sweet talks you, you got to make sure he's got a job to support you. Can I get an amen on that? Before you marry Henry, you better make sure Henry's got a job. That's God's plan. That's God's will. Three ways Satan tempted Eve and tempts us today is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2, 15, 16 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life is the world. They're not of God. 
Five steps and tactics that Satan used to destroy the family then and now. I want you to listen very carefully. Eve saw. She looked at it. Many sins come through our eyes, and the eyes affect our hearts. Then Eve took. Then Eve ate. Then Eve gave to Adam. Many times, one spouse will persuade another spouse into something that will destroy that family, like pornography, or like incest, or like child abuse. I know of a family right now where the wife, uh, they're in court actually now, but the wife allowed her husband to rape her daughter for three years and knew it was going on. Unbelievable, isn't it? Then Adam ate the fruit. Notice this. You all hearing me? Notice, nothing happened when Eve ate the fruit. Now we hear about women being the first one to sin. Nothing happened when Eve ate the fruit. Why? Only after Adam ate the fruit did both their eyes open. Read the Bible. When Eve ate, nothing happened. When Adam ate, both their eyes open. Why? Because he's the God-ordained, God-appointed priest, head, and leader of the home. He's the one that holds the keys to making and breaking of a marriage and a family. So we hear all this stuff about women? No, no, no. Let's go back to Adam. Because he's the bird that took the, the fruit, and after he ate it, did their eyes open. It's not Eve's fault. Why? Because God never told the woman not to eat the fruit. He told Adam not to eat it. Read the Bible. Are you all with me? Therefore, it was Adam's responsibility to tell Eve not to eat of the fruit. He was the one that was to guard her and to protect her against satanic attack. Where was Adam when Satan cornered Eve and tempted her? Hmm, you never hear that, do you? Interesting. Where was he? This is why Satan came to Eve instead of irresponsible Adam. Because Satan knew that he, she'd not heard the voice of God like Adam had. Therefore, Satan caused Eve to doubt God's word, doubt God's love, doubt God's holiness, and doubt God's goodness. Satan appealed to Eve's mind, her eyes, and her spiritual side. Through the lust of the flesh, it was good to eat. The lust of the eyes, it was good to look at. And the pride, it was one to make her wise. The ego. Satan tempted Jesus the same way he did Eve here as the way Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And the same way we face temptations today. Through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Satan works from the outside in. It starts out looking, and it ends up eating. God works from the inside out. He starts on our heart. Works from the outside. You all with me? Satan tries to make us think that God is unreasonable and unconcerned about us, and this leads us to sin. He tells us all the advantages of sinning. First, he gets us to doubt God, and then he gets us to deny God. Doubt always leads to denial. He tells us the benefits of pornography. He'll tell a wife the benefits of committing adultery. He'll tell the husbands the benefits of using dope and alcohol. If he can get a family member to doubt the love and the goodness of God and then to deny any small part of the Word of God, that family will fail. It has to. It will be destroyed. Satan got Eve to covet and desire the undesirable, to touch the untouchable, to taste what should not be tasted, and to give what should have never been given. Eve became a casualty in the war on Satan against the family. Why? Because they believe Satan's lie that there were no consequences to their sin. You know, choices have consequences. You know, human beings are strange bunch. We desire what is forbidden. You tell a little kid, don't take that bar of candy, it's gone. We desire what is forbidden. Those who are not to eat of the forbidden fruit must not come close to the forbidden tree. When your eyes see what they shouldn't see, and your ears hear what they shouldn't hear, and your hands touch what they should not touch, and your feet go where they should not go, guess what? You're going to do what you should not be doing. Now, what are the results? 
This causes families to mistrust, to isolate, to separate, to separate, and to disintegrate. That's what this results in. The family, my friend, is the society's foundation. It shapes the hopes and the attitudes of a child. When a family collapses, so does a society. As the family goes, so goes the world. Satan's plan of attack on the family is very simple. It's to divide and to conquer. It's to tear our families apart from the inside out. He's always looking for a crack in our families so he can slither through and destroy it. He'll do it in one of two ways. He'll keep you isolated where you're never around each other, keep you so busy that you're never around your family, or he'll keep you in conflict with your family. Now I want to give you all some startling, mind-boggling, shocking, scary, frightening statistics tonight that's going to absolutely mesmerize us and open our eyes on how effective the devil is attacking our family in this generation. Focus on the Family compiled this frightening list of the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's view on God. Now this Supreme Court Justice is trying to get this list made into law. Listen to this. Number one, the traditional concept of the, as the husband, as the breadwinner, and the wife as the homemaker must be eliminated in America. Number two. The federal government must provide comprehensive child care to children, taking it away from the parents. Number three, the Homestead Law Act must give twice as much benefit to couples who live apart as couples who live together. Number four, in the military, women must be drafted when men are drafted and be forced into combat duty along with men. Number five, Affirmative action must be applied to equalize the number of men and women in armed forces. Number six, you all listen to me? This is going to blow your minds. This Supreme Court justice wants the age of consent for sexual acts lowered to 12 years old. Number seven, she wants prostitution legalized, border to border. Number eight, all boy and all girl organizations must become sexually integrated. For example, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts must change their names and their purposes to become sex integrated. This is the Supreme Court Justice of the United States of America. We're the richest nation in this country, in this world. Yet, we have the highest crime rate in the world. We have the highest murder rate, the highest robbery rate in the world. With the greatest percentage of our citizens incarcerated behind bars. We have the greatest military power in history. Yet, we're powerless to control our street gangs. We're powerless to control our drug problem. We're powerless to control the violence that pervade our streets. Interesting. Let me give you this downhill road to hell that Satan's plan of attack has been on the family since 1962. 1962, prayer was taken out of schools. Bibles were taken out of schools. The Ten Commandments were taken off of the walls. 1973, abortion was legalized. 1976, the first euthanasia took place. 1982, the Indiana Supreme Court allows the parents of baby doe which has Down syndromes, to starve that infant to death. In 1987, John Jokes starves his comatose wife to death and does it legally. 1988, doctors, Dr. Stephen Yarnell recommended that all nursing home patients be euthanized, murdered. 1989, the University of Iowa College of Law drafted a Model Aid for Dying Act that says anybody over the age of six years old could request to die without the parent's approval. 1990, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, and Dr. Death helps first patient to commit suicide. 1991, Derek Humphrey wrote his book, Suicide Manual. It was the number one on the New York Times bestseller list for five months. 1994, Oregon was the first state to legalize doctor-assisted suicide. 1996, 
Now 12 states approve of doctor-assisted suicide. Now, from this bunch of radical left-wing liberals, we hear two words today. Diversity and tolerance. What does that mean? It means when Christians will not support abortion, adultery, homosexuality, and feminism, and pornography, then we're called born-again bigots. We're called homophobics. Tonight, we're going to see ten fiery darts of Satan to destroy our families and this nation. Listen, my friends, to what the Holy Spirit has to say tonight. What I'm going to say is going to shock you, it's going to anger you, and hopefully it's going to cause us to stand up for Jesus in these last days. If we don't stand up for Jesus, who will? And if not you, then who? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? we got to stand up for Jesus against these demonic hordes of hell and the mighty blood of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got to stand up with our shield of faith, faith covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, because the Bible says we overcome the devil by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb of God. Now, number one fiery dart is schools, colleges, and universities that Satan is using to attack our families. It used to be that public schools were God-centered places of learning. Today, listen to me, today kids are taught what is politically correct and what is not. If I seem a little bit perturbed tonight, I don't apologize because these statistics and these facts that I'm going to tell you absolutely incense me to the core in a righteous anger. What is isn't politically correct that our children are being taught? Politically correct is humanism, atheism, evolution. That is politically correct. Anything about God or Christ or right moral living is politically incorrect. Today in our schools they give out condoms with the rainbow curriculum. You know what the rainbow curriculum teaches? It teaches nine-year-olds how to have anal intercourse. That's what every nine-year-old needs to know. And I better move on quick, brother. They want sex education taught in our kindergarten. Today, we need to know that in 1993 and 1994, the National Education Association contributed $14,000 to pro-abortion groups. And these helped anti-God, the anti-Christian politicians run for office. Now, today, they teach the Big Bang Theory and the Theory of Evolution. What is this? Fifteen billion years ago, some small particle, smaller than an atom, contained all the matter in the universe. This somehow spontaneously exploded into the atmosphere, and the earth was formed. Now listen to me. There are billions of galaxies. 500 million light, light years long, 20 billion light years high. And they want me to believe that all this come from one small particle that somehow miraculously exploded in the atmosphere and it somehow come together and formed all the matter and all the force in the universe. Not in this lifetime I'm not going to believe it, not hardly. A group of scientists who were not Christians got together and decided to find out the probabilities of an entire cell coming into existence anywhere into spontaneous existence. You know what they come up with? They said the chances of this happening anywhere in this galaxy or anywhere else would be 10 to the 40,000th power light year. What does that mean? Very quickly, anything with less than the 10 to the 50th power light year will never happen. Huh. In other words, the scientists said, I quote them, the chances of a tornado blowing through a junkyard and creating a 747 precisely is far greater than the Big Bang Theory ever happening. Does that make it clear enough? How many know the tornado is not going to blow through some junkyard and create a 747? They're nuts. They're crazy. They're off the rocker, man. What is the 10 of the 40th power? You all ready for this? You multiply 2,000, trillion, quadrillion, billion years 
with a hundred million, two million, billion, trillion, and you haven't even come close yet. What am I saying? The Big Bang Theory and the Evolution Theory never happened. Like I told my godless teacher when I was a junior in high school, I had to write the paper and I got an A on it. But at the bottom of that paper, I said the only Big Bang is when God kicked the devil out of heaven. Yes. Huh. This is an attack on God's image, on God's power, and on God's family. Now, let me take this another way. Modern educators have redefined the education of our kids in our textbooks. They now teach that the most dangerous person in America is the person who lives by godly moral standards. They teach that everything is relative. There's no moral absolutes. There's no right and there's no wrong. Just a few years ago, according to the Gallup poll, there were as many as 10,000 communist professors in U.S. colleges. Communist. What is their goal? Their goal is to corrupt and destroy the United States by destroying our kids. Schools and colleges are the main proponents of socialism, communism, humanism, and atheism. These people in public schools that our children attend are called history revisionists. What do they do? They've removed the history of our forefathers from the textbooks. That's why people in my generation and younger do not know the presidents of the United States. Thus, no one knows their roots. That's why we have flag burnings today. That's why we have war protesters today. Now we have a president of a country who's one of them. I'm going to hit Clinton in a minute. I'm going to nail Clinton, brother. It's about time I nail him. They redefined history to meet their antichrist views. Almost all references to Christian heritage have been erased from our textbooks as to appease the left-wing atheists who run our public schools and colleges. How many knows I'm liable to get in trouble? How many knows I don't care? I know this is going over the radio, but I don't care. The National Education Association has a very sophisticated training program and a great deal of literature informing its members how to defeat the religious right and how to defeat and wage war on the traditional family values that our children are being taught. Little by little, all knowledge and reverence for God has disappeared from our classrooms because of Sigmund Freud and Charles Darwin. Now, if we lose our history, then we've lost the door to our future. We must know our roots, people. Today, schools use propaganda that teaches no morals, no values, and no God. Kids are taught that they're apes. Whose fault is it when they start acting like apes? Like the Los Angeles riots, the Oklahoma the bombings. Whose fault is it when, they, when they're taught that we swung from trees, that our granddaddy wasn't a monkey? Whose fault is it when they start acting like monkeys? Somebody's got a lot of answering to do when they stand before God. Today, my friends, it's unconstitutional for students to pray in a public school. It's unconstitutional for students to read a Bible or even bring a Bible to school. It's unconstitutional for the Ten Commandments to hang on the walls of a school. Today, in the United States of America, it's unconstitutional for a school board to use or refer to the word God in any of its writings. Now, what's the schools like today as a result of all this enlightened, new age teaching? What is the results? What's the results of teaching our children no right and no wrong? More than two and a half million high school seniors graduate illiterate every year. In 1989, only 5% of the 17-year-olds could read and understand a technical document. Only 6% could solve math problems with more than one step. Only 7% could draw a logical conclusion from scientific facts. As many as 525,000 attacks, shakedowns, and robberies occur in the high schools monthly. Over 16,000 crimes 
are committed daily somewhere in a school in the United States of America. 135,000 students carry guns to school every day. One out of five students carry a weapon to school every day. As much as 80% of all crimes in the United States are committed by school-aged children. More than $160 million is spent every year by the government, by your tax dollars, to teach kids how to use condoms on bananas, to attack abstinence-based education, and to teach that homosexuality is an alternative lifestyle. $160 million of your tax dollars go to teach kids that. In Oklahoma, an 11-year-old girl was sued by the school for reading her Bible on the playground during lunch. The Supreme Court ruled that an 8-year-old could not read his Bible on a school bus. The average American third grader spends 900 hours a year inside these anti-Christ public schools. Now you tell me they don't have a big influence on our kids. Yes, they do. A great big influence. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I'll tell you what the righteous can do. We need to put our kids in the Christian schools or homeschool them because we pay the, the salaries of the public school teachers. We need to let them know we don't appreciate them teaching anti-God curriculum to our students. For the first 150 years, our nation taught God in the schools. We need to get them out of those schools and homeschool them ourselves or put them in a, at a Christian school. Today, 3 million students go to Christian schools, and those students score higher on all tests uh, more than the public school students do. Now, the second fiery dart against the family is homosexuality. They march in parades, and they scream of obscenities and profanities. They thrust themselves before television cameras in vulgar poses, homosexuals I'm talking about. They have their own clergy and they have their own churches. They've been known to throw AIDS-infected blood on Christians at marches. They've designed a way to control the media and to control the White House and hold them hostage to their gay rights. Disney World now has the annual Gay Day. Hawaii has been trying to be the first state to legalize same-sex marriages, which would result in uh, homosexuals and lesbians adopting children. Now I'm going to hit Clinton. January 1993, President Clinton, that's Bill Clinton, not Hillary, it's hard to tell the difference, signed a bill that lifted the ban on homosexuals in the military. During Clinton's first year in office, he personally appointed more than 24 homosexuals and lesbians to high public office. Former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Joyce and Joycelyn Elders said this, said the anti-gay sentiment in this nation is due to an irrational fear of sex from Christians. This woman approved the rights of gays to adopt children. She said that conservative Christians are to blame for the most problems of our nation. They say, according to the statistics, that most homosexuals can have up to 300 different sex partners in a lifetime. They have no family commitment. They mock at everything moral, decent, and godly. In 1993, there was a small Presbyterian church in San Francisco, California that was attacked by a band of homosexuals. This band of homosexuals surrounded that church. They grabbed and pulled at the members and the little children, trying to drag them into the streets. And of course, the church members were terrified. The church members had to lock and bolt the doors of the church to keep the homosexuals out. Still the gays took heavy chairs and beat against the doors of that church. And while they were doing it, they were shouting blasphemous profanities at the church members. And they shouted, we want your 
children. We want your children. And the children clung to their parents, crying, horrified, scared to death, talking about Satan's attack on the family tonight. How many know Sodom and Gomorrah cannot hold a candle to the United States anymore? The third fiery dart against the family is abortion. January 1993, President Clinton signed a bill that allowed body parts of aborted baby te babies to be used in fetal tissue research. He also approved the abortion bill RU486. He also vetoed the ban on partial birth abortion. This is the ultimate climax of evil in our time that would allow a nine-month-old human being to be murdered in the womb of its mother. Clinton authorized military hospitals to do abortions on women in the service. Joycelyn Elder said this. She said, it's about time for Christians to get over their love affair with the fetus. Today, my friends, the mother's womb has become a tomb for the devil. More than 30 million human beings have been murdered in the wombs of their mothers in 27 years. 40% of teen pregnancies end in abortions. Over 50% of all women who have abortions are in their 20s. Listen to this. There was a nurse who performed an abortion, and I want to quote her. She said this. She said, I knew we weren't really helping the women have safe abortions. Instead, we were maiming them and killing them. I remember one 27-year-old patient. After Dr. Harvey sedated her, he started the abortion, but he discovered the baby was too far advanced. Its muscle structure was so strong that the body would not come apart from the head. After almost an hour on the table with six nurses holding and pulling and stretching the woman away from Dr. Harvey, the baby's bodily body finally separated from the head and removed it, and it was a very long ordeal. One nurse, who never responded to anything, rolled her eyes back in her head and fainted dead on the floor. The baby was about eight months per, uh, old you know, pregnant, old enough to live outside of the mother. The baby's body was too large to go down the garbage disposal. So Dr. Harvey told me to go and put it in a trash container on a neighboring clinic so it would not be found in their hospital clinic. I want to say this loud and clear. I'm telling you all, judgment is coming to America quickly than we know it, brother. Judgment of God, the blood of innocent babies is crying out to God. 30 million lives are crying out to God. And if God tarries, judgment is going to hit this nation swift and severe and quickly. Amen. Satan's attack on the family. The fourth fiery dart is the government. Communists and Marxists and the occultists run our nation and want to control and destroy our family. The White House has made, made no secret of the fact that they intend to get control of our kids as early as possible with this New Age vision of the New World Order. So did Adolf Hitler. Whenever people believe that the government has all the answers to their problems, then that same people will redefine their history and cause the children to turn against God and cause their children to turn against their parents and vice versa. That's what's happening today. The secular humanists have control of our public schools. That's why my generation is called the X generation. We don't know where we've been. We don't know where we're going. We don't have any roots. We weren't taught anything in the public schools. Now, listen to what Hillary Clinton said. Hillary Clinton wrote a book, and she's on the verge of being indicted right now, I might add. So how much credit you going to put in a woman about ready to be indicted? But anyway, she wrote a book in which she said this. It takes the village or the nation to raise a child, not a family. She was implying that our kids ought to be raised by the state and not the family. How many know Satan is attacking our families through the government? 
Now, the fifth fiery dart is absentee fathers. We have a whole generation of kids without dads in the home. The absence of dads in the home harms three areas of child development. It harms their educational development, it harms their sexual identity, and it controls their ability to obey the laws of the land. This results in lower grades, higher crimes, and less ability to relate to the opposite sex. Therefore, where dads are at home contributes to the stability of society. Kids who do not have dads will find a dad in a street game. How many of those are telling the truth? Materialism has absolutely destroyed the family. It's caused the dad to be away from home. The greed to get more has ruined the family. What has this resulted in? Listen to this. The average dad, the average dad spends less than one half a minute a day with his children. Less than 30 seconds a day. Parents today spend 40% 40 40 less time with their kids than the parents of the last generation did. 75% of kids of divorced parents see their biological parents less than two days a month. Single mothers spend one-third less time with their kids than do married mothers. Nearly 80% of preschool kids who are admitted to psychiatric hospitals are you all listening to me? Come from fatherless homes. It's bad enough that preschool kids have to be admitted to psychiatric hospitals to begin with. What good, great God Almighty, what place does a four-year-old have to do in a psychiatric hospital? Unbelievable. In 1989, there were 13.7 million kids with no dad in the home. 27% of those kids are born into single parent homes. 25% of homes choose to have one parent stay home with the kids. This is according to a Gallup poll I'm reading from. 44% of that same survey believe kids suffer when mothers work away from the home. Now let's get back to that materialism a moment. The average new home today has 38% more square feet than a home in 1970. Materialism, greed, the need to get more has destroyed the family. Now, the sixth fiery dart I want to talk about is pornography. There's a new movie about the life of Larry Flint, the publisher of Hustler magazine, and it's once again brought out this issue of pornography. The sexual attitude in America has changed more over the last 20 years than in the previous 200 years. We used to have laws against child pornography, but now our Attorney General has supported laws legalizing many forms of kiddie pornography. And uh, don't be surprised if that little girl, John Bonet Ramsey, was not involved in some form of kiddie pornography. She's the exact picture of a little kid involved in some type of pornography. Don't be shocked about that. January 1994, God sent an earthquake through San Fernando Valley, California, that absolutely devastated 70 of the top porn film companies. These 70 film companies are responsible for 95% of the X-rated videos in the United States. How many know God's trying to get their attention out there? God gave them just a little bitty foretaste of what they could expect to be coming. Now what's the results of all this pornography? 150 new films are produced a week. Porno films. A well-run strip club can make $5 million a year. Top porn stars can earn $20,000 a week for dancing. $8 million was spent on pornography in 1996. Hardcore video rentals hit $665 million in 1996. 8,000 X-rated videos were released in 1995. The number of hardcore video rentals rose from 75 million in 1985 to 190 million in 1992. How many knows the devil's attacking the family through pornography? Since 1991, 
the number of new pornography uh, titles released each year has increased 500%. Unbelievable stuff. In 1996, $150 million was spent ordering X-rated movies through the pay-per-view channels on television. In 1996, hotel guests spent $175 million to watch porn movies in their hotel rooms. Talking about Satan's attack on the family. Now, the number seven fiery dart, let's talk about euthanasia. Legalized abortion opened the door to legalizing doctor-assisted suicide. Two U.S. district courts have overturned bans on doctor-assisted suicide. Some of the supporters of abortion and euthanasia are people like Planned Parenthood. Now, everybody knows Dr. Jack Kevorkian. He's their Goliath champion. He's a murderer. He's a murderer. Dr. Death will one day stand before the life, the lawgiver, and the judge of the eternal ages, God Almighty, and he will give an account for all them people that he's helped to kill, calling it doctor-assisted suicide. This group has a death lobby every day before Congress that has 15 indicators of what they think a person is and is not. You know what they call a person? A person has to have an IQ above 40. He has to have self-awareness, self-control. He has to have a sense of time. He has to have the ability to relate to others intelligently. He has to have concern for others. Has to be able to communicate with others intelligently. Has to have control of existence. And he has to have a certain degree of brain function. Now listen to me. This would completely kill every mentally retarded person in the United States of America. This would completely kill every person in a nursing home. How many know what I'm talking about? This sounds very similar to Adolf Hitler's perfect race theory. You know what it was? In the Holocaust camps, people were murdered whom Hitler considered being of no value. Who was that? People mentally ill, people who were deaf mutes, people who were disabled, people who had hereditary diseases. Yeah. Hitler had them murdered. And now the United States is following swiftly in Hitler's footsteps. I'm going to blow your mind. According to the Gallup poll, 1996, 75% of Americans believe that doctor-assisted suicide, euthanasia, should be legalized. Three out of four people in America believe that. Satan's attack on the family. What's going to happen to our granddaddies and our grandmothers? What's going to happen? They're going to kill them off if we're not very careful. The eighth fiery dart is the media. It used to be that parents could turn on the television without fear of their children seeing something ungodly. It used to be that parents could turn on the television and hope their children watch something like Andy Griffin or something like that that promoted positive family values. But today it's different. Today TV portrays Christians and families as bigots, rapists, and hypocrites, always in a bad way. Those who run the major media in Hollywood are anti-Christ people who view Christian families as a threat. This is why I try to ignore a lot of the news I hear on television because it's biased against God, the church, and the family. What was once safe TV is now satanic TV full of messages about weak dads, incompetent moms, and rebellious children. You know, the TV programs Married with Children and Roseanne and The Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead are all prime examples of Satan's diabolical attack on the family. Dad is a moron. Moron. Mom is a sex goddess. The children are criminals with no respect for anybody. Hollywood preaches that love is only physical. 
just for the moment only. It's cheap. If it feels good, do it. Just do it safely, they say. Hollywood tells boys that being a real man is determined on how many girls you can score with or how many guys you can maim or kill, like Rambo or uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, whatever his name is. Now, they put out these movies like The Last Temptation of Christ. Listen to this. In this movie, they had the spotless, sinless, holy, righteous Son of God saying this. Quote, I hate God. Satan lives in me. I am constantly lusting after women. And the only reason I don't consummate my lust on women is because I'm a coward. End quote. How many knows that was liable to get somebody mad quick? Like me. Huh. Another movie portrays Jesus Christ and homosexual relationships with the disciples. Freddy Krueger, Jason, and all that demonic stuff shows graphic sexual brutalities done to women. Why? Why is the devil doing this? We'll tell you why. Because Satan wants to numb their children's minds to violence and sex and horror. Because numbing causes children and us to ignore and to get used to those things. Tolerate them. Because the more of that stuff you see, you grow numb to it. Interesting, isn't it? That's why we have six-year-olds who kill people. That's why we have nine-year-olds who are raping little bitty girls. Man, this is unbelievable stuff. Now, what's the results of this satanic attack through the television? Listen to this. Only 49% of Hollywood producers, actors, and all that Hollywood crowd believe adultery is... Okay. The average person sees 9,230 actual or implied sexual acts on television every year. 81% of these acts is extramarital. 92% of, 94% of these extramarital acts is done in daytime soap operas. I always wonder why they call them soap operas. You know, soap is a symbol of cleanliness and godliness and it's an oxymoron there, isn't it? The average teenager watching television for 10 years, between the ages of 8 and 18, will see almost 75,000 acts of illicit sex. Numbing the mind I'm talking about. 65% of Hollywood's films are rated R or worse. 86% of Hollywood crowd never attend a church or a synagogue. Before a child reaches puberty, he will see 8,000 acts of murder on the television. The average American third grader, eight, nine-year-old kid, spends 1,170 hours watching television. That's more than three hours a day. Who knows, my friends, how far Hollywood is going to go in the next generation? to degrade and despise God and the family and the church. When I read these statistics, man, it's like I, sometimes when I preach, I feel like I'm straightening uh, the picture frames on a burning house, like I'm polishing the furniture on the sinking Titanic. It's almost overwhelming, overpowering to see that the devil has got this much influence over our nation and over our children and attacking our family. Now, the ninth fiery dart is rock and roll music and rap music and all that other. They have lyrics about killing the parents and policemen, hating God and devil worship. Madonna wrote her book that showed her in dozens of lesbian sexual acts. Rock, group, rock groups glorified death through their names like Megadeth and Slayer and Carcass and Obituary and Suicidal tendencies. Ozzy Osbourne several years ago wrote a song called The Suicide Solution. 
you remember a few weeks ago there was a group of occult satanic teenagers from Pikeville, Kentucky that went to a motel and had a blood satanic ritual and they went down to Knoxville, Tennessee after listening to the rock and roll group Marilyn Matson and they killed the whole family. Talking about Satan's attack on the family. The tenth fiery dart against the family is feminism. The spirit of rebellion controls this God-hating, man-hating bunch of women. They are a radical group of women who want to control the media and the government and destroy the family. They promote occult and demon worship of nature. Their goal is to control the White House and to remove the man as the head and the God-appointed leader and priest of the home. Matter of fact, Sheila Cronin, one of the head feminists, says this. I quote her. Marriage is a slavery to women. End quote. Everybody turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Real quick, I want to read you a verse here real quick. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. I'm going to read that one more time. If you're there, say amen. Now the Spirit speaks, ex I'm reading 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy 4, chapter 1, verse 1. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, how many knows we're living in the last times right now, that some will depart from the faith and they'll give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons and speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared as with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. This feminist bunch forbids women and says it's ungodly to marry. We're living in the last times, people. Amen. Now, I want to ask you one question, and then I want to answer the question. How effective has Satan been attacking the family? Let's talk about suicide. Since the 1960s, suicide has increased among kids and teenagers 300%. It has doubled over the past 30 years. One in seven teenagers have attempted or will attempt suicide this year. It's the third leading cause of death among teenagers. 30,000 teenagers yearly attempt suicide. Every four hours, a kid commits suicide. Before this 24-hour day is done, six kids will be buried after having committed suicide. Let's talk about teen pregnancy. Since the 1950s, out-of-wedlock births have increased 490%. You know, these statistics are so big that they boggle your mind. Every 59 seconds, a baby is born to a teenager who is not married. Every 104 seconds, a teenager becomes pregnant. Before we get out of this church house tonight, 60 babies are going to be born to teenagers somewhere in the United States. Before we get out of the church tonight, 40 teenage girls will become pregnant who are not married. 1991, more than 1.1 million teenagers became pregnant. One third of all the births in the United States are to girls with no husbands. Teen pregnancy has risen 621% since 1940. More than one million teenagers will get pregnant this year. Good old President Clinton says this, teen pregnancy is the nation's most serious social problem. Don't take a genius to figure that out, does it? I might run for president next year. I can probably do a better job. By the year 2000, 60% of all kids will be born illegitimate. 56 million Americans have a VD, venereal disease. 1.4 million right now has AIDS. 25% of Americans have an STD, a sexually transmitted disease. In 1992, 
120,000 new cases of syphilis were reported. 4 million cases of chlamydia, 1.1 million cases of gonorrhea, 500,000 cases of genital herpes. 50% of all people over the age of, everybody say 12, has a sexually transmitted disease. 50% of all girls ages 15 to 19 are sexually active. 85% of all boys who impregnate these girls leave them. A woman is raped in the United States every 48 seconds. Now in the 1960s, 25% of men and the 45% of the women who were married were virgins at 19. In the 1980s, less than 20% of men or women were virgins at 19. Less than 20%. Less than 2 out of 10 were virgins at the age of 19. 30% of them say they've had one or no sex partner since turning 18. 30% say 2 to 4 sex partners. 22% of them says 5 to 10 sex partners since turning 18. In the 1950s, 90% of women got married before living with their husbands. In 1990, one in three women got married without shacking up first. Unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. How many knows we've changed a lot in a generation? From 1960 to 1965, 43% of the brides were virgins. From 1980 to 1985, 14% of the brides were virgins. That's about 1 in 10. Research has proven, according to the Gallup poll and all this other stuff, that virgin brides are less likely to divorce than women not virgins prior to marriage. According to a U.S. News and World Report poll, over 50% of Americans believe it's not wrong to have premarital sex. I don't care what half of America thinks about it. I could give a careless rip what America thinks about it. What does the Word of God say about it? The Word of God says premarital sex is sin. In 1920, in 1930, in 1950, in 1997, and 2097. What's wrong, my friend? What's wrong with being a virgin when you get married? What's wrong with living for God before you get married, while you're married, and after you're married? What's wrong with standing up in America in 1997 and saying, I'm a virgin and I'm proud of it, I'm a Christian and I'm proud of it? What's wrong with that? Research has proven that the most current social problems of America are tied to illicit sexual behavior, like adultery, premarital sex, sexually transmitted diseases, VD, AIDS, and all the rest of it. Today, right now, we have unmarried mothers at 12 years old. We have unmarried grandmothers at 28 years old. Unmarried grandmas at 28. I think my grandmother's turned over her grave right about now. Hmm. Yet, our kids are taught that safe sex is the answer. The only safe sex is no sex before marriage. Period. Now, let's talk about divorce. Today we have no fault divorces and prenuptial agreements and trial shack up marriages. What's all this cost us? Over the past 30 years, divorce has quadrupled. 50% of the spouses think the other spouse is committing adultery on them. That's why one in two marriages end in divorce courts. So I ask you, is Satan effectively attacking our family?